Welcome. This demo will show you how to use PowerDC to do multi-board package electrical and thermal co-simulation. Here is a list of all the workflows in PowerDC. For single board, you can do electrical or thermal simulation in both electrical and thermal co-simulation. For package designs, you can extract a package thermal model. You can use the pin location effectiveness flow to get the resistance between VRM pins and sync pins, or get the resistance between any two points. We have a workflow to create a resistance network as well, basically the whole board DC model. And finally, the multi-board slash package simulation flows and electrical and thermal co-simulation flow. Let's do a brief introduction of the multi-board package co-simulation flow. We have two flows. One is just electrical simulation. First, you need to create schematic blocks and then load layout for each block, and then build the connections between two blocks and set up the VRM and sinks. For electrical thermal co-simulation, you need to set up thermal-related parameters. You can then set up some constraints. Once all the settings are complete, click the Start Simulation to do the analysis. PowerDC provides a GUI to easily create the blocks and build the connections. Add the blocks into the canvas and load the layout for each block and then create the connections. This is similar to System SI. As an example, we will show electrical thermal co-simulation for a motherboard connected with four daughter boards. After the simulation, we will get the results for the five boards as following. Now let's go to the demo. In PowerDC, we can now see the workflows that we just previously described. If I open the single board IR drop analysis workflow, you can see it has all the steps that we would need to get through our analysis. Each workflow has a simulation mode. This is usually enabled right after either creating or loading your workspace. Some workflows have two simulation modes, again, depending on whether or not it does co-simulation or not. And here's one of the multi-board ones. For this demo, we'll be focusing on the multi-board slash package electrical thermal co-simulation flow. We'll start by creating our workspace. This just creates a blank canvas here for us to get started with. And we merely go ahead and add some blocks into the canvas. Now, these don't represent anything right now, but we can move them around, just make some additional selections, place as many as we need. In this case, we need a total of five. Then once we have our blocks, we just go ahead and right click on those blocks and associate them with an actual design file. And we'll start off first by loading the motherboard. And we'll keep that one in the center. And then likewise, I just right click on all the other blocks that we have and point them all to the same daughter card layout file. Once I have all the blocks associated with a layout, it's very easy to right click and now create connections. And I'm creating connection from each of the daughter cards to the motherboard. Once these are all done, I can click on the connections. And using the editor that I have shown here, it's a matter of picking the connector on the daughter card or the DIM, in this case J1, and connecting it to one of the slots in the motherboard. And this is just a graphical way of basically plugging in the four DIM cards to the motherboard. So each of the daughter cards will use the same connector, and it's a matter of using a different connector for each one on the motherboard. So now that I have all my connections created, I can click on them and look at the actual connectivity that exists for each connection. And I'm color coding the, the ground connections. And you can see that there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the signals on the daughter card to the signals on the motherboard. Now we can go ahead and actually load the layout that is associated with each block. In this case, we're looking at the motherboard design. And go ahead and finish the setup related um, tasks that we have. We might want to check the stack up and or the pad stack. Make sure that we have the right DC net selected for our analysis. And then go ahead and use the wizards that are available in PowerDC to go ahead and create the VRM
In this case, you'll notice that the, the selections also highlight in the canvas. It's just a matter of putting a few properties on here. And also creating any necessary models for the sinks. In this case, on the motherboard, we want to take care of the CPU. And again, it's just a matter of filling in a couple of values, the normal voltage tolerances, and current. Now we can go back and look at the models that we've just created. We can cross probe those to those onto the uh, layout canvas there as well. And we'll follow a similar procedure for the daughter card design. This is going to ask us to save away the work that we've already done. Now for the daughter card, same type of uh, procedure. Check our stack up. And you can also check our nets. And then go ahead and set up our sinks. Now for the daughter card, what we're going to want to do is basically select all the components with the exception of the connector. And that's the same basic settings that we did previously. What we're doing now is setting our ambient conditions. It's pretty easy to do. And I'm going to head and set up our thermal components. And these are hierarchical in nature. Basically, if I set it for the one device, basically checking my outline, then each of the instances of that device will get the same model. And the same for the PCB components. This is a matter of verifying material and dissipation properties. And basically, then we go back and follow the same process for the motherboard. Verify thermal components and PCB components. Should dissipation properties okay? And that's pretty much it for setup. At this point, we're ready to run a simulation. We've got our configuration all set. And it's just a matter of hitting the Start Simulation button. And I'm actually going to sit here and let this run. I'm sure it doesn't run very long. But I want to drive home the point, point that it is doing a true electrical and thermal co-simulation. It's not the matter of just taking the output of some thermal tool and setting up our ambient conditions. It is simulating both thermal and electrical and making sure that both converge, taking the impact of one on the other, namely your IR drop impact on temperature and then your temperature impact on your material properties. And that's it. Simulation is finished. Now it's just a matter of going ahead and looking at the results. And there are numerous ways to do that. We can look at them in table format. You can see that it cross probes um, to the back to the layout design. If we have thresholds set, we'll see any violations that we have. We can look at electrical and thermal distribution plots. And we can do this for each design. For the electrical distributions, we can go layer by layer. And similarly, we can go layer by layer for thermal as well. Just give a little more room here. See, we get our thermal distributions in 2D. And I can do the same thing for each of the designs in our multi board configuration. Go ahead and load one of the blocks for the DIM cards and do the same thing. You can go layer by layer both electrical and thermal. And for each of these, capability of zooming in, modifying the display if we need to. And lastly, we also have the ability to do some 3D distributions. Let me take a look at those. And depending on where we are, if we're finished with our analysis, we also have the ability to run a customizable and very thorough sign-off report. And what's going to happen here is you're going to see the design basically flash through 
almost all the plots I just ran you through. And it's doing that because it's gathering all this information and it's going to put it in this one report. We don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing. But once it's finished, we have a report with all the information, all the data, all the distribution plots, all the results, all in one easy to read and comprehensive place report that you can share. At this point, it pretty much concludes the demo. I want to thank you for your time and watching this. And I would also again like to drive home the, the point that we are doing true electrical and thermal co-simulation with a wide variety of outputs and a customized report at the end.